Hello, hello! For the final part of the Cruiser Aggression series, I will be featuring probably the best, most aggressive ship of them all, the Des Moines. And this is probably, out of all the ships, the best ship to be aggressive with. Well, someone just managed to hit that guy. Some guy randomly shooting managed to hit the Baltimore. Gave me a lot. You have a nice rating. I actually looked this up after the game, this rating. It's uh, some called of uh, war, war, Warships Today rating. And apparently I have, after 40 battles on the Des Moines, I have something like 2.1k Warships Today rating on the ship. Apparently that's good. I honestly don't really care. It's, well, I think, one of those things people are blowing out of proportion. I don't really give a shit about it. I'm not going to install the mod because I think it clutters up my screen too much, so I don't really care about it. Anyway, this is a... Pretty typical T10 game, I think. There's a bunch of T8s, a bunch of T9s, a couple T10s, you see Yamatos, Yamatos, Zaws, and stuff. And it's my favorite type of game mode, aka 4 cap, four point caps. Uh, I hate the 2 cap mode, I think it's so boring. I would love if you could just opt out of it and you could only play 3 and 4 point uh, cap, because that's so much fun. Anyway, I take a fairly aggressive Aggressive peak here. They, I'm spotted by a plane though, so that's why I'm angling myself. If you, if the enemy knows you're coming, if you're spotted, you don't want to sail straight out of the, straight out the line, like basically giving them your broadside. That's why I came out at an angle like this because I didn't want to give them an easy shot. Especially as a Des Moines, especially against Saws, who can use AP quite easily at that range to wreck you. These guys are using HE, but I'm shooting HE right back. I mean, just because they have a flatter arc doesn't mean that I can't hit them back just as well if they don't evade properly. This guy realized, holy shit, I'm losing a bunch of HP to this demo and I can't just sit here giving him his... <laughs> sailing in a straight line, I gotta start avoiding. Turning around now once again, because um, at this range, even though I land... even though you can land some shells, as I did here, it's... your accuracy suffers. The Des Moines is, out of all the cruisers, the Des Moines is probably the weakest at hitting cruisers at range, but it's also by far the strongest ship in close range. I mentioned it in my Des Moines commentary. Um, close, this ship becomes exponentially stronger the closer you get to a target. It's absolutely my favorite. Out of all the T10 cruisers, if I had to pick my favorite brawler, it would be Des Moines 10 out of 10 times. None of the other ships even come close to the sheer power the ship has in close range. It's just a goddamn monster. This one say, this guy, one guy said, meh, let's push, they are running. And it turns out it's a... Yamato? No, Yamato says, I'll push hard, see, in the Yamato, yeah. And of course, if a Yamato decides to push, which he obviously should do, but it's such a rarity, that uh, I, I will obviously happily, I will happily push up and scout for him and basically support him. This is such a massive rarity that the Yamato actually understands that he needs to be aggressive. So I will happily give them all the support they want. That's how I showed himself, so I instantly opened fire on him. This is one of the things why the uh, Des Moines is the best pusher out of this all, is because the flat are uh, the superior firing angles you can have. You can sail straight at a target and bring 66% of your DPM to bear. It's the only T10 cruiser that can do this. The Hindenburg and Zao both have to get a bunch of broadside if they want to bring all four of their guns to bear, or turrets. Whereas the Des Moines can just bomb rush you straight at you and still deal massive, massive amount of damage. Provided you can hit them, of course. Now these guys are obviously fleeing. Trying to bring my rear turret uh, with me into the game, but I'm still being a bit sketchy with the Zao in front of me. He could be just waiting for me to get broadside. Yeah, there it is. He fired the HE though. But the HE from Zao still hurts. So, as you can see, I've been slowing down my pace a bit, slowing down. This is probably actually the this point where the Zao is, I mean, the Des Moines is the weakest. I mentioned it before in when I talked about light cruisers, when I talked about BDs. If you have a large arc on your shells, then the worst position you can be in is when you're chasing enemies. They are sailing away and you're chasing them because your shells have to travel even further to reach them. You can see how, how large my arcs are and how far ahead I have to shoot. 
and this makes it so so hard for me to land my shells on them. So this is basically, this is a weak point for the Des Moines. You are weak here. It's like, it's much like when you're playing the Hindenburg and a battleship is pointing his nose at you and then you just keep shooting him in the nose and instead of relocating, instead of uh, changing target, you keep shooting at that nose and you keep complaining how you don't do any damage. This is the same thing, to keep chasing in the Des Moines in a situation where you can do no damage or where very weak damage. So obviously I turn around. There's nothing here for me. They are running. This is this is not a point where my cruiser is strong and I recognize this and I turn around. And I feel like a lot of people struggle with this, especially on the Hindenburg. I constantly whenever when I posted my last commentary I once again had people telling me how it's a bad ship because it can only shoot broadsides. Like have you ever seen a game where no one has ever given you a broadside? Have you ever seen a game like that? Of course not. People get broadside all the time. You have to get broadside eventually. It happens sooner or later people will get broadside. But for some reason, these people who criticize the Hindenburg, they basically, they, I have to assume, they just sit there shooting at the bows of ships and then they complain how they didn't do any damage. And instead of like stopping shooting, slipping around in concealment and repositioning themselves or shooting other targets, they just keep shoot, basically banging their head against the desk and wondering why they don't do any damage. This is, this is the same case if I would keep chasing this. I would complain about how weak the Des Moines is because my arcs are so bad and I can't shoot this guy's chase running away. No, I recognize this is a weakness for my cruiser. This is not a Zao would be quite strong here, but the Des Moines is not. So I turn around. If you look at the map, there's a Zao, an Otago, a Shimakaze and a North Carolina who have all been chasing this Tashkent around. So obviously, this is my chance because, well, first of all, I'm able to close the distance before they can even see me. And the closer you get on the Des Moines, as I've said over and over again, the closer you get on the ship, the exponentially stronger it gets. So here I have the opportunity to close the distance before they even realize I'm there. And the Zao, while it is the most versatile cruiser and strong in many aspects, it's probably the weakest out of all the T-10 cruisers at Brawling. Like, it has its turrets, I mean, it has its torpedoes, but that's pretty much it. The firing angles are awful. You have to give a shit on a broadside to be able to shoot all turrets. And uh, the turret traverse rate is like over half a minute to turn 180 degrees. So, in this case, I am the god. This is where the Des Moines is the king. It isn't even a discussion. I mean, if someone wants to argue it with me, go ahead. I'll just think you're an idiot, no offense. But uh, at this range, where you know the Zao is gonna torp, so you know you can prevent it by simply changing course and adjusting your uh, and adjusting your speed, making you very hard to hit. And at this close range, the Des Moines is a goddamn god. There's a Zao, there's an Atago. Do I care? Of course, the Atago, he turns to torp me at this range. The Zao already torped, but I know this is coming. He's trying to turn his turrets, which on the Atago are also quite slow. Here come his turrets, here come probably his torpedoes. Was it worth it? He died. He don't know if he even had time to launch them. The Zao, you can see, he's still turning. He turned away because he wanted to get away and he launched torps from two wallies. You see, his turrets are still turning. His front turrets are still trying to turn and shoot me. They're still turning and turning and turning. And this is where the Zao is not that strong. This is not its strongest aspect, whereas this is the Des Moines bread and butter. Now they have finally turned, the turrets finally turned, and I'm so angled that they can't really use AP. And I easily dodged his torch because I knew they were coming. That's a uh, Ataga dead, that's a Zao dead. And there's still a North Carolina here. Once again, I use the fantastic firing angles on this ship. I said before, I said it earlier in this commentary, there is no cruiser that is as good as being aggressive as the Des Moines is. And uh, basically you can see here, I'm bringing all my turrets to bear on him while I'm still closing the distance very, very quickly with him. And this, when you get this close, your AP starts to really hurt. 8.7k, like damage, and this volley did 3k, and then the next volley comes and does 2.5k. Just this constant BPM, I angled myself straight towards him, basically bounced most of his shells or avoided them. Another 6k volley. Like, this damage is just brutal, it's painful, there's nothing he can do about it either. Like, he could angle himself, but as soon as he tries to angle himself, I would simply sail past him, and then blast him in the citadel from point blank. Because, uh, uh, 
at this ra at this range, uh, I I will turn faster than his turrets. He's just caught in a terrible position, and I, there's nothing he can do. He could turn away, so he could start sailing away. Then I'd just switch to HE, and I'd melt him with HE. The Des Moines is a terrifying, terrifying cruiser when it's rushing you like this. It's so so strong. Even this Atago, like, is gonna be my next kill, absolutely no doubt. I think overshot a bit, let's adjust. Undershot a bit, this next should be a Citadel wall. Okay, and the game already ended, because I killed so many, we got so many points. And the game is over. That's how quick it went. Only got two of the kills since I'm still in North Carolina. But the damage wise, I still did, what? 3500, almost 150k damage. I mean, once again, in my opinion, there are no bad T10 cruisers in this game. There are simply players who are not utilizing them to their full strengths. Anyway, that was my Des Moines aggression commentary. I hope you enjoyed it.